Welcome to the Spa Girls podcast, the self-publishing podcast for authors. You're in the right place for the best writing, marketing and publishing advice, plus interviews with industry experts and best-selling authors. I'm Cheryl Phipps. Bar Barrett. I'm Wendy Bella. And I'm Trudy J. Welcome Yay. to the Spa. Welcome hey, back. The whole gang's Yay. back. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. Okay. For those yeah, people okay. listening, we're dancing. Um, yeah. Anyway, it's from Welcome Back, Cotter. Right. It okay. Was. Oh, well, that's oh, it. I don't even know what that's that. Our that. age. Did you do? It young? was early. Got no idea. Early John Travolta. <laughs> you need to look that up because you would enjoy it. Right. Go. Okay. Anyway, back on track. Today we are answering a question that was on YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. Is that correct? To YouTube commenter. Yes. Talking about how to reverse engineer a bestseller, mm-hmm. um, which is intriguing, mm-hmm. right? That's like fun. if we. Yeah. If we knew how to do it, maybe all of us would be doing more of it per se. But what it what it led us to was actually um, to go back to our own books and look at our own best selling books um, and try and sort of figure out why they were best selling, why they did so well for us. You know, this is only our books and what we've done, um, and kind of look at the anal- analyzing them a little bit and try and sort of encourage everyone listening to maybe do a little bit of the same for their own books and and try and figure out a few things about how maybe you can reverse engineer a book um or a bestseller yeah. sorry i think it's so a lot that... of variables right yep. yeah um, yeah it's not just black and white there's a there's a lot to a bestseller what yeah. makes the book go yeah. just all of a sudden fly yeah and we and did initial, talk unless you're writing to market then it's it, it's it can be partially about luck about yeah. the timing of when you put that book out is 100%. it hitting the right um tropes for what people are looking for right now mm. yeah. I, I think there's a little bit of fairy dust on everything to be honest mm. no matter what it is you're writing I think there's always that little aspect of a little a little magic in the air mm-hmm. mm. but I, and I also think it's where you're at in your career right like mm. you know certain authors mm-hmm. could put out a shopping list as we were talking about yeah. earlier and it yeah. would be a bestseller, yeah. right? Yeah. So, yeah. and that's because of who they are and and the reputation yeah. they've garnered and the previous books they've sold and yeah. and people will buy them whether or not they even read that kind of book versus exactly. someone earlier on in their career. You have to kind of be a little bit got to work harder, man. Yeah, yeah. Gotta work yeah. harder yeah. to get those. Especially nowadays. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, totally. Yep. There aren't that many now that just put a book up and it just takes off. That just that's a real outlier thing, you know. Yeah. I just I don't really think that happens like it used to. Yeah. And even someone like, say, um, Colleen Hoover, who sort of you would call a bestseller and everything she sells. I mean, she kind of took off initially, I think, because of TikTok and not because of her own TikTok, but because of mm. other people talking mm. about her on TikTok. Yeah. And she had a massive backlist. Like she had I don't when she took off with um I can't remember the name of the book. Um that book that book that we all know um <laughs> that I don't need to even mention the name of because we just all know um she had a, a backlist like she she wasn't a newbie mm. author that wasn't her first book that was mm. just happened to be the book that took the fancy of people on TikTok and just and mm. and then suddenly and all of her back- the same yeah yeah, yeah. TikTok. and so yeah. was Ruby Dixon with her Ice Planet Barbarians yeah. it was so, picked up by a, a book talker um and I mean again it was already popular in in the sci-fi romance readers but it was a smaller section of the market and that sort of went mm. mainstream and mm. suddenly people discovered a romance and b romance of blue aliens was pretty hot and mm. that's yeah, yeah. <laughs> the rest so, there you true. go so yeah so, there so, you go. so that's it's where visibility. the luck is right yeah that's yeah. what just cheryl was just saying that's where the luck mm. is it was mm. just her book that they picked but up. it's but it's also that they had good books to be picked up. Do you Excellent. know what I mean? Like it good starts, yeah. yeah, this is yeah. not going to be yeah. something that happens to someone without a, a exactly. book that, that has all the all the things. Yeah. Um, so let's, I guess, maybe start with that, shall we? Should we look back at our best-selling books and mm-hmm. try and figure out why they were best-selling and, and kind of the data that we looked at to kind of figure yeah. that out? Is that sort of where we want to go? Okay. Who wants to start? Yeah. Cheryl, Cheryl? Start. she's really into data, whereas I'm not. <laughs> okay, so um, my best-selling book out of my two pen names is um, Apple Pie and Arsenic, which is a cozy mystery under C.A. Phipps. And I think for me, looking back at, at, at its sales, I can absolutely see the fact that it is in a series has pushed that forward. Um, the fact that it hits all the tropes, it's actually a culinary cozy mystery, so it does have really good subcategories. Um, it's an amateur sleuth, it hits all the tropes, there's a murder, um, 
um, lots of clues, red herrings, all that sort of thing. So it fits neatly within what it is supposed to be. And when you look at the cover, you know what it is right from the mm. start. It's sort of got a um, um, illustrated, no, not illustrated, I don't know. What yeah. would you call that show? Yeah, it is. It's, it's an illustrated, illustrated yeah, cover. And it's, yeah. yeah. And, and it's font. also got the catchy, and the catchy title, right? Yes. It's that kind of the pun yes. kind of title. Yep, yep. And, um, it also features um, animals, so mm. in this case, a cat is in this series, um, and that's quite fundamental to cozy mysteries. Not all cozy mysteries have animals, but that is definitely um, a, a subgenre of it. Mm. That um, yeah, it's kind of like a foil to your your heroine, and of course, she is a female sleuth. So mm. I think that's probably all I can say about that series. It, um, it has um, seven books um, already plus a prequel and mm. the prequel um, is free so I haven't made a lot of money out of that one um, but I can uh, um, Applebine Arsenic has still made the most money even though that is the one that I will often use as a, a freebie in free booksy or or other promotions like that so in actual fact it's done far better because the sales have come through from all the other um, mm. books in the series because that has done so well in its own way. Mm. Proof and was, make money and give away books. And was yes. there a big release strategy for that year? Or was that your first cosy? Or? That was my very first cosy. Yeah. And probably I, I could have done more, but I had nothing to go with it. I didn't yet have um, a reader magnet. I made that pretty quick. But um, I would say that by the time I got to um, Cookies and Chaos, which was the third book, then I was releasing much stronger, yeah. and I was and I was following the uh, first book free, second book ninety nine cents, which I I do and I don't do so much anymore. But I yeah. definitely do do first and series free quite a lot. In fact, a couple. So it was of a series. soft launch, but it's grown yeah. with yeah. the the publication of the other books. And, mm. and what number are you up to now? What letter? Um, uh, I've got seven out, and yeah. so the eighth book will come out next year. Yeah. And, and I'm not I'm not sure where I'm going to leave it actually because yeah. because you, you can know, get to Z. Let's be honest. Well, yeah. well, I could do I could do. It's quite tricky. I'm I'm, yeah. I'm doing H right now. It's quite tricky, but um, <laughs> I, I actually already have the cover, so yeah. I, I try yeah. and plan in advance for like the next yeah. book. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I I think um I think series for me is definitely the way, and cozy mysteries for me is was definitely a good choice to change yeah. to after writing 20 books in romance <laughs> yeah so there's this, the small town aspect there's the yes. sleuth aspect there's the, there's always an animal usually in there right usually, yeah. there's humor in there yeah yeah um, so there 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 are four things that you've carried through on all your books yeah. yep and of course there is a little bit of romance which escalates mm. um through the series but mm. um that's not necessary but it seems to be the norm these days yeah. and i think that's actually growing mm. Because yeah. I think people read cozies for a certain thing, right? Like they, yeah. they definitely, they don't want gore. They don't want, um, mm. you know, really bad confrontational. Language. Yeah, no, no bad know, language. Violence. Yeah, no yeah. violence or anything like that. So aside from the fact that there's a murder, that's there's at the a core murder, of yeah. it. It's a light though, you know? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's kind of, and, and when you think about like Theodora's Taylor's sort of butter stuff, which I do like to think about when I'm doing stuff these days, there's a lot of the cozy mystery butter in your books. Like, you know, mm. you, even yeah. just the culinary thing, you just, you, you know, you have the, mm. people love that, love the cooking, love mm. the, the recipes. Mm. And you, you know, you have all those kinds of things. The, the animal mm. is very kind of mm. buttery to have that. You know, there's, and even I don't know, I don't know how people can like write books without romance in them, quite frankly. But just even that, there's quite, you know, yeah. the fact that there's just this little yeah. bit of a, yeah. um, a tale of that in there. So I think that when you actually, that, when that came out, here was, was that sort of was cozy mystery really in its infancy, or was it had was um, it well established? I think it was. Were I readers was, looking for more books? Yeah, it was. It was starting a wee boom that mm. actually. Uh, I don't honestly believe that it's ever really slumped. It's yeah. it, you know it's had little you know hills and valleys and that sort of thing, but it's never really slumped. It's ongoing, and and cozy mystery readers are voracious. Mm. I would say they're getting up there with romance readers because mm. it's just there's so many cozy mysteries authors out there and some really really good ones, 
that are doing like fantastically, mm. absolutely fantastically. But, Where I was going with that is I wondered if you caught that wave, you know, with the release of that. I, it's a good I, book. I, you caught that new, that it was starting to climb cozy yeah. at that time. I think so. I, to a certain yeah. extent, I think so. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think, um, you know, I'm not the fastest writer, but I was at that stage, I think, getting out three or four books a year. So that mm. helped. That really helped because it, it, it kept me relevant and um, visible. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Nice. So what are some of the things, that if we're analysing for the purposes of a bestseller and we're looking at that best-selling cosy mystery in your arsenal, are we just looking at the, because as you say, that there's the number that it's sold, like a monetary number, mm -hmm. and then but on top of that there's the number of books you've actually sold because you've sold a lot of them, um, you've mm -hmm. had them in free deals and things like that. Mm -hmm. Are there any other things that we should be looking at? Like just out, I'm, I'm literally asking, like I'm, Curious if anyone's you mean got any to other measure ideas. The success, yeah, to measure the success yeah. of it. Is it well, literally just down to how much it's made or is it? Well, if you're writing for money, then yeah, <laughs> really. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it is. I mean, usually the review number will come as a result yes. of that success, you know. Yes. So mm. at that kind of, you'll see books on, on um, book reads and Amazon with like thousands and thousands mm. of reviews. Those yeah. books have been around for a long time and are very popular. But I wouldn't. Like, I think that's, that's good. A, Review numbers a, is another good one. Yeah, that's kind yeah. of post success, though. You know, yeah. so I, for me, for me, reviews were um, a slow build, but um, I took some of my reviewers from my um, romance list. So uh -huh. I had that to start with. Yeah. I mean, I can't emphasize the fact that you need to get your newsletter list going and you need to um, get your reviewers on board. Yeah. So, whilst not all of my reviewers wanted to, re review cozies I then advertised for more mm. um, once I had a cozy mystery Facebook page and a newsletter mm. and um, you know they come and go but I had like mm. a, a, um, a steady amount and um, I, th I think that really ha helps I mean this uh, the first book in that series has well over a thousand reviews mm. and I and I honestly think that that helps especially yeah. um, when you are trying to um entice people through promotion yeah. social proof eh? yeah social, social proof, proof. Yeah. Huge, yeah. the big deal you yeah. know huge deal yeah, yeah. that is yep. true it's it's funny because you and you hear stories about books becoming bestsellers later on too and mm. and things like that like i i think when i look at a book and it's only got like five reviews on it versus mm. seeing a book that's got uh, over a thousand I, I know which book I'd choose like mm. yeah and that's absolutely and I don't even I'm not even talking about looking at the reviews I'm just yeah. it's a review number that that many people yeah. have yeah. kind of taken the time that's to review it, it. Yeah. Um, because we've only got so much time now right we haven't got yeah. time to read all these books so we're going to go for yeah. the one that everyone's reading mm -hmm. you yeah. know yeah exactly so. exactly yeah. And, yeah. and of course when you see reviews that are just you know off the charts saying how fantastic a book is I mm. mean why wouldn't you give it a chance whereas Absolutely. you might not otherwise mm. yeah it definitely and drops. also just a side note of authors the more reviews you have the percentage tends to go down just because of how numbers work kind of yeah, like yeah. The term, percentage yeah. of stars like you know yes. so don't don't worry about that. Don't fret. Dinner <laughs> don't fret. Yeah. And don't worry that every everybody's not giving you five star reviews because it's yeah. just that's just not the real world. <laughs> yeah. You don't want that anyway. No. Yeah. yeah. Already. Very oh, good. Sorry. Well, congratulations, Cheryl. That's Thank awesome. Yes. That's really awesome. Way to go. Yeah. Way to go. And also, when we come so back we, in another few years time and you're up, you're thinking of what to start your series name with Z, like I don't know what <laughs> Zephyrs yeah. and Zeitgeist, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Oh cool. yeah. Anywho, okay. let's move on to Wendy. Oh, I was gonna Wendy. go to Wendy. No, I got him first. <laughs> yeah, I thought you might do. Um <laughs> So in 2013, I published a series, I started my first book um, in a series that's now got 11 books in it. And that's, it's not my best seller, but it's my best series. And that book hasn't been out as long as the one that is the best seller, but I know it will get up there. Um, so when I published it, it was actually turned down by traditional publishing house uh, who I was with at the time. And they were like, no, it's... Um, got an element of paranormal, no one's going to like it, rah, rah, rah. But I really thought that series was a good series. So armed with what is it? Tell you us guys the and Shah, of course. 
Um, so it's called um, the Sinclair and Raven series. I don't know why I didn't call it the Danger series because that would have made a lot more sense. But um, so I published the first book in 2016, Sensing Danger. Um, and that book is is going bank gangbusters. But the 11, it's got 11 books in it. But all, I always write standalone. So while they're connected, you can pick any of my books up at any stage. And I think that has made a huge difference for me because people just coming on board to me mm. can pick up book number 10 and read it and go, oh, there's all these other ones. I'm going to go back and read it. And quite a lot of my reviewers will say, oh, you can read these books to stand alone, but I recommend you go back and read the series. Mm. You know, I mean, it's, it's got, good, isn't it? It's yeah. Too. yeah. That's yeah. right. It's got over 3,000 reviews. It's got, um, you know, and yeah, it's just, I think it's, it's, when I first wrote it, it was meant to be three books. So I wrote it that all all the main characters had to be in each book to it's to do with paranormal anyway, which was a bit of a mistake because by the end I had like twenty two characters <laughs> that had to be in these these pivotal scenes in the book. So keeping the balls in there wasn't easy. But anyway, I wrapped up that series. Um, I can't even remember this year. I think at the beginning of this year and. I'm still getting emails today asking, is there any chance that, uh, you That's know, brilliant. I can, yeah, yeah. So it. how so many books in the series? Now? 11 books, 11. Um, historical, uh, very small touch of paranormal, not as in werewolves or stuff like that. It's just something they can do. Yes, Trudy. So why do you think those ones did so well? Because we talked about this. I want to give a bit of backstory. Like Wendy yeah. published Duchess by Chance, and when was that? 2000... Uh, 2013. Which was the one rejected by the trade yeah. hub at the time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then we, and that did really well. And then you mm. kept pub and then you published different ones. And, and we're, and we, uh, Wendy kept saying, I want to publish this paranormal one, historical mm. paranormal. And we were all kind of like, oh no, wait a little bit longer, Wendy, wait mm. a bit longer, especially Shah. Shah was like, the... Shah was like, no, you're not publishing that, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Shah, well, Shah at this like, point. Yeah. yeah. And then and then Wendy needed to publish more books, publish more. And then it got to a point where Shah said, All right, Wendy, you can publish those weird yeah. books it's time. that you want to publish. So now. About that. I so have long. my permission. I and... published the first three very quickly because yeah. I yeah, did. So yeah. that was a real bomb bomb bomb, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But they were they were kind of outside your normal wheelhouse in terms of your historicals. So adding that bit of paranormal was kind yeah. of a little yeah. bit interesting. And now they are your second best most yeah best-selling series yeah yeah and i mean if i had to what is it i think it's family yeah huge family's massive mm -hmm. and this family from the start had um you know the, the little bit wilder sister and then they had the older brother who had to give up everything to to care for his family and they were down on their luck and then um so there was all those sort of real ticky feel good things there's a lot of humor there's you know that sort of thing but there was always this link where they they're protectors of another family and there was always a link that they only marry each other so there it was while it was slightly different there was there's, it's a big feel good family humor and there's a lot of um there's also intrigue in there um i don't know why to be honest so um, I, I don't yeah so i can I, give you my opinion yeah you do that. i can give you so, mine too so just the <laughs> The reason, I mean, you know, look, Wendy could do what she wanted to do. I did not have some kind of sway over no, Wendy. No, you did. You did. No, you did. <laughs> <laughs> but she was doing really well writing her, you know, um, regency traditional romances. regency, yeah. well, no, not traditional, but like her yeah. sexy regency romances, yeah. which had still had the aspects that are know Wendy's known for which are really good really strong characters feisty you know not not at all wishy-washy hero and strong males um with humor and that family and that connection and she writes men really well which is usually what female romance readers are reading for is the heroes mm -hmm. so absolutely heroes that you can fall in love with and Wendy was doing really well with those. And mm. I just felt innately that it was it was too early to suddenly take a slight fork Delicious. in the road at that mm. point. Now, we're mm. not talking years and years and years here. Felt like years at the time. It yeah. felt yeah. like 10 years. It was a long time because Wendy kept asking and saying, can I it do it wasn't. now? She was like, no. <laughs> can I do it now? <laughs> what about now? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? And in my opinion, the reason that the Sinclair and Ravens did so well is that she didn't break the promise to the reader 
her existing readership because I think that was really important was mm. was if you're going to take a diversion in the path you don't want to just suddenly throw all the, the baby out with the bathwater mm. kind of thing yeah and yes there's paranormal in it but the consistent thing because by that stage I was I was working with Wendy at the time and we had a really strong art team and I remember writing the email to these art team saying you know this is kind of new and it's got a touch of magic, I think is how I put it. Yeah. And we did get some pushback. Absolutely. Lot, but we absolutely yeah. did get some pushback. Mm. And and that was kind of, I thought, okay, so we're going to, and I remember saying to Wendy, this is not going to do as well <laughs> because no. this is something different. But it wasn't too different. No. That, that there was no werewolf, that, vampires. No, it wasn't too out there. Out there. Mm. And so the consistent thing that came back from the art people that were slightly reluctant was oh I would not have normally read this but uh, mm. basically mm. it was fine and mm. I think and that's when I knew <laughs> she had the mix right so I think that's why it's done so mm. well it's not too out there because paranormal readers really mm. want the paranormal and it yeah. wasn't enough in it yeah. to satisfy them so I think that's right was, but there's I have hooked people into that slight paranormal now absolutely and that's the series yeah. that I've just started has more and ironically now like, you see the like the paranormal woman's mm, um the, taken off. yeah mm. it has so things do change right mm. you know and also people are very quick to say i'm not going to read that or i'm not going to read that and that's where you kind of got to go gently into mm. into something yeah else. i mean and i think I, at the time you being able to say to people uh you know give it a shot you know mm -hmm. um I, I really need you to just try it and you know and yeah. i think i came on board a lot of my readers that i've still got today Mm. And but the thing is, here's the thing: you had readers to say that to, yeah, yeah, and I yeah. think if you're a beginning author and you're writing all across different genres mm. or you're oh, merging yeah, too, sure. it's a lot harder yeah, to do that. Yeah. Um, because a, you are launching that book with a really good number of reviews. Mm. Going back yeah. to like we were just saying, the other yeah. thing I'd say is that the covers were almost indistinguishable from the, you know, your your normal. Mm. regency romance Absolutely. but with a slight totally tweak different. they had some ravens on there we did a, a, a kind of a series logo mm. so there was the elements there but it wasn't it wasn't you know it was it was still enough to attract that same readership yeah. so and I, and I think i think also you didn't try to pull the wool over anybody's eyes no yeah. the way you handled it, it was exactly very open and above board yeah. and like you say it wasn't a huge um, amount of paranormal we're, we're, we're no. just talking senses here mm. but the fact was that um, you didn't have to start a new pen name mm. to do it and and you never will have to because it's enough of what you write in the other um, you know in the straight regency that your initial readers love that they mm. can follow over yeah. and not feel like it's so and, but I, and I also think I've made a huge sort of decision to always carry both characters from different series through each book so I'll yeah. have cameo appearances in mm. each of my series mm. from other series like mm. um, finishing the Sinclair and Raven series was really tough because the pushback I got was massive like email after email after email can't you find any more cousins yeah. you know and we, mm. you know I'm sure there's a long lost branch in friggin Ethiopia I mean it just <laughs> went on and on and on yeah. I'm not kidding you and yeah. still it goes on now um, but if you actually read the reviews on my latest book that's coming out this weekend and things have started to, people are saying, you know, I was really reluctant after the Sinclair and Raven series. Yeah. I didn't think she could, you know. And it's like, it's like that series is going to be love and hate it. Yeah. The pain of my existence for. for the rest of my life. But, yeah. they, but they're saying I, I was reluctant, but I loved it just as much. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. 100%. I get, I get that, but it's like, yeah, people, it's but this is a really theory, good point, right? right? Yeah, this mm. is a really good point because people almost don't like change, and once no, they've discovered they something they like love, change. they don't want someone to, the... to throw something up that's different from what they've always read and loved. Yeah. But I'm the same, aren't we? All the same. Yeah. Like if well, she all laid around and started villainously murdering people and had bloodied knives in her cozy, yeah. we wouldn't read they them. Wouldn't be happy. So it's this like is going part to a restaurant of it. and you get yeah. by, by the yeah. same thing every time yeah. you go it's yeah. because you've never tried anything else and you could <laughs> find something better. So. Yeah. But you might find something worse and it's yeah, exactly. there's a real the problem. stress it's over that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Um, and and, and know, when you think funny. about authors, like like say, I mean, I'm, I'm sure, and I Jane Ancrentz, love Jane Ancrentz. Mm. I really struggle with her pen name, Jane Castle. And yeah. it's not because she writes it many differently. It's just a different genre that I don't normally read. Whereas Amanda Quick, yeah, love Amanda. I'm happy with and contemporary. Happy with, 
Yeah, same Rowling. person. Everybody Jake loves Rowling. Harry Potter, and yeah. nobody, no, well, I shouldn't say nobody likes your romance. Not as many people liked right. the other that's one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And I mean, you can name any number of them. So that's another thing to maybe consider in terms of the, this best selling mm. back engineering thing is like if you're someone who wants to switch between lots of genres um, mm-hmm. and it, you are doing that, it's, it, some people make it work. And I, I'm sure there's unicorns out there who can do it. But the majority of readers they're going to want something again and again and again in a similar yeah. genre in a similar mm. style mm. with a similar type of characters in yeah. a similar feel and i've got people who read all my historicals and won't touch my contemporaries mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you go. Yeah. absolutely won't touch them don't like yeah. contemporaries not interested yeah. can't and one lady even said to me when i put it i didn't know you were lani blake yeah. how mm. long have you been lani blake and i'm like, not not that long actually but you know like yeah, yeah. they just don't even know yeah yeah but there is a real difference between those two. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But I also and think, yeah, yeah from she's... series to series, that it's got a pretty consistent heat level as well. And I think for romance, that's another thing. You know, your, mm. your readership, you'll get people that read really hot will read down the heat levels, but yeah. you tend to pick people that they read at a yeah. lower mm. heat level don't necessarily want to read up kind of thing. Mm. That's mm. kind of my... Mm. And and they, like Trudy said, yeah. they don't want surprises. They're just mm. not interested. They're they, they buy the same book from the same author all the time yeah. because they know what they're getting exactly. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, we've all had a. I mean, all of us. Uh, not that we know any names, but we've all had a favorite author that suddenly written something that's like so. Yeah. Out of the, what? It's like what the heck? You yeah. know, it's like somebody else has written. It all. <laughs> yeah, and so. potentially they could have. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe. Maybe. What about you, Trudels? Okay, so my um, best-selling book is Hidden Dragon. Hidden which Dragon, is Hidden Dragon, um, which isn't I, I can't, it's interesting because I kind of did like my first series was the Carnival series and that didn't sell as well. I didn't wasn't bestseller immediately on my very first book. I was quite shocked and you know which is what I was expecting to become a mega star. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah no, we gutted. all have that. Hope. We all felt like that. Too. Every single yeah. writer listening yeah. to this has had yeah. that. Mm. We of all course. have. There's no shame in that. Ah. Yeah, yeah. And I love those books and I still love those books and that's awesome. They but, are great um, books. So, and then I, I was driving along in the car on the way to the beach with my husband and I said to him, look, I'm going to have to, I'm going to, I'm going to make a book and it's going to be so hardcore in the genre that it's just going to be the, every person of that genre. And I was like, right, well, what's the most popular, it's going to be urban fantasy because um, that's just what I decided I wanted to write. Um, and it's going to be dragons because dragons are popular and it's and I just went from there like literally I said right so it has to be a kick butt so female you were reverse protagonist. engineering what was popular before you'd yeah, even yeah. written the book yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and I literally was a thing. <laughs> yeah and I and I wrote it very much like in a style of I, I, I can't even remember how much plotting I did I don't think I did very much plotting because I remember just kind of like going from here to there and kind of having these scenes and just kind of going oh let's put a tidal wave in that she causes <laughs> I'm like what <laughs> like okay and I had fun writing it it was and it kind of the only thing was about it is that it felt a little bit more constrained than when I'd written the carnival series I felt like I was Mm -hmm. kind of forcing myself to kind of go in a certain way in a certain direction um but it did kind of become my best-selling book and and I think also the fact that has dragon in the title probably doesn't hurt um and I had someone accuse me, it's really funny, accuse me of kind of, play, or not plagiarizing, but kind of using um, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, and kind of because I knew that it would make the book sell better. <laughs> and I hadn't even thought of that until no, this person mentioned it. But me. yeah. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's, and it, I'm trying to think, the cover didn't have dragons on it, but I think maybe if I put a dragon on it, it would probably do even better, maybe. Um, it is also one of, um, I've had it up not for longer. Series? So there's four and I'm just writing the fifth book. Yeah. Um, the thing is like you guys are talking about the series and I I'm struggling writing the fifth book in this series. I I can't, you know, I, I'm kind of motivated to do it at the moment, but I have been putting it off for a number of years. And it's because I've kind of I'm sick of that series. I'm sick of yeah. those characters. Yes. I don't yes. want to do it. So yes. I'm kind of in the future I'm planning to really only do trilogies. Yeah. So I don't know whether that's <laughs> going to be something that's kind of gonna be difficult mm. for me because I can see how series are mm. popular and it helps you kind of keeping in the same world 
So mm-hmm. unless it's trilogies with like the same characters, but keeping the same world and just picking different characters or something, I don't know. Yeah, give them. Yeah, but that's all right. You can. Something I'm sure like you that. sort something out. I'm, I'm sort of figuring it out. Some but... genres also have a kind of a, I don't know expectations might be too strong a word, but for series length as well, because some of them, like the dark romance, will often have like um, individual books or you know duets or mm. few trilogies, yeah. but yeah. no more than that. Whereas yeah. other. Yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, that's romance exactly right. can go on and on and on. Mm. Look at look mm. at our friend Bella Andre, who yeah. Yeah, exactly. I would never do eleven books again. I don't know how she does that. I'm going to yeah. just keep it to six. Yeah. So, mm. and that's a really good idea. Like, for example, in fantasy, you can have a fantasy world that mm. keeps. Like, I've got um, oh god, I can't remember his name. Uh, anyway, my one of my favorite um authors has a world, and then they'll put off one off little mm-hmm. books about mm. ca- different characters like minor within characters in world, their story yeah. Yeah. within the world so these are the overarching you know big tomes that are um magician can't remember anyway it's got pug i think his name is anyway i'll stop there but uh, you know and some of my favorite books by that author are the little one-offs mm. and they were and like Anne mccaffrey oh my god i love Anne mccaffrey mm. and she does the same she has the world of pern with the dragons and a lot of those books are kind of so. So maybe that's something I can think about. Yeah. Like, so if you went back to that book, why yeah, would it be? Yeah, no, moving back. Yeah. Um, why would why would that book do you think have done as well as it did? So dragons, dragons. What it had it? a kick butt, and I've realised it because I my next series after that is a nerdy researcher, and she just doesn't sell as well. And I think it's because dragons a eh? but also my main character she's very kick butt she knows yeah. lots of different martial yep. arts she gets in yep. there she's a protector she goes and she she rescues people she's very active she's very kind of onto mm-hmm. it and i think that sells really well in terms of urban fantasy yep. um that's think, kind of what they're looking the setting, for the setting do you think that played part in it the the setting, i'm, I'm not as good at setting as <laughs> Yeah. as I should be perhaps but I so there are I mean none of the settings that they're in are particularly um amazing I think there's just lots of kind of weird characters come up and maybe that's you had a really I, good release for that one though I seem to remember you worked very hard on that release remember it that's too long ago now it was like 2016 I can't it? remember last week no didn't you <laughs> release that at a, at a at a lower price Probably. I was doing Yeah, yeah I no, seem to remember releases. you really worked hard on yeah. that release. Yeah, and I was doing, I mean, at that time, and then the other one I released at the similar time was um, Fire Mage, mm. and that again was a 99 cent release, and then went up after the first mm. sort of week or so. Um, and that was kind of my, how I was releasing back then, so. Mm, yeah. um, and they did really, really well, those books. Like, um, yeah. They, uh, yeah. That would be and a I fair think... comment that it is an evolution, isn't it, of, of how you release and mm. yeah. how, how quickly you release. So and I think that series has actually suffered because I didn't release later books. Like I released the first, second, and maybe third book fairly close, but the well, not even the third. The first and second were very close together, and then mm. the third was a lot later, and then the fourth, fourth was like a year or two later. Like they, they kind of suffered because of that. Mm. Um, and I'm really excited to be writing the fifth book um, mm. in that series so then I can box set it up. Yeah. and kind of start promoting it in that way um and yeah. find you know like in a completed s- series because that's yeah. the other thing there's a lot of writers out there uh, readers out there who won't um read a book no, in don't. a series that's not completed so yeah. i'm kind of thinking once i've got that book series completed that's a whole new way of marketing it for me yeah. um so that in readers, itself is kind of readers cool. like what they like and a lot of them if they, they will check and see how far the series is away yeah i get yeah. that all the time i get emails from people saying when is this series gonna mm. finish you know yeah. yeah yeah they've been burnt they've they've yeah. got into a series and they and it hasn't been finished for whatever reason and, and yeah. so they're weary and i think actually you know a point is that no bestseller kind of well, very few bestsellers are actually kind of islands unto themselves mm. like there's the support around them whether it's previous series whether it's um you know pu- after books that follow so therefore they're boosting that initial mm. one in the series as well so there's i think that's something when you're looking at your own bestsellers consider that too i think it's important when trudy was talking about what numbers to consider i also think the numbers in the series is another number to to mm. consider yeah mm-hmm. oh the other thing I wrote with, with this dragon book was the chapters were very short and I think I've been mm. reading something by Fast James pace. Patterson at the time yeah. um mm. and he was like he's never does chapters longer than 1500 to 2000 words mm. so I made sure all my chapters were very short it is mm. very fast-paced it moves really quickly 
Yeah. And I, Which that kind was of something fits else. With a tip heroine, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. She's not going to yeah. sit around considering her fingernails debating on something. She's going to get out there and. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and do stuff. Um, yeah. Which so, also leads us on to doing our research, mm, what we're writing, mm, and yeah. how others are, are, how others who are doing well are doing it. You know? Yeah, I think you need to do a list of questions and you need to do some research on those writers and go, well, covers, yeah. blurbs, yeah. length of book, what are the hero and heroine like? You know, like you, yeah, point you want to write in a specific genre, then understand that genre. Mm, and also 100%. what are the reviews, the existing mm. reviews on your book saying? What are they saying? Because mm -hmm. the reviewers might not necessarily put it in the same just words as an author might use, mm. but mm. You, you will pick it up. You'll see it in there. You know, I love this i love this town or i you know it's mm. like visiting old friends kind of thing mm. that's you know you know if you're nailing a small town that's exactly what you want to see in reviews yeah mm. yeah, yeah the sure. other thing um is that just because a book is a bestseller doesn't it's not just because of how it's written necessarily i think you have to have a mm -hmm. base minimum well mm. drafted book that's well, well written book whatever but sometimes it's it's the marketing or sometimes yeah, it's luck absolutely. or sometimes it's tiktok or sometimes it's you know mm. oprah picked it up i don't know <laughs> but or, some, you know, or whatever yeah yeah, yeah or book there's a, or, a tv or movie series that that comes know, out that's similar, similar. yeah mm. yeah have you had a chick lit book at the moment or a woman's fiction with a super bright pink cover with and then that sort the of happened to be yeah. at the same time as the Barbie movie? You know, mm. it could just be a fortuitous yes. collision yeah. of yes. creativity that's yeah. out there in the market. I yeah. agree. Yeah, yeah. so one hundred. It's not as easy as it sounds to kind of back engineer it. If a only it was. Yeah. Yeah. No, and if it was, and I mean we've had, haven't we? We've had authors on this podcast over the years that have said, Man, I don't know what it is about that book or that particular series. Like I've tried, you know, and mm -hmm. I've I've then written another series or another book using that exact same, you know, tropes and they're using the mm -hmm. same level of cover and all the rest of it and it just hasn't hit so mm -hmm. yeah, timing's massive I, I think it's especially in this game good to analyze but also remember that you can't control everything as much yeah. as we'd like <laughs> and I also think it takes I mean at least for me it takes a while to write a book and you want to be writing a book that you enjoy writing yeah. so if you're sitting there going well the top selling genre is mm. this and yeah. it has to be this kind of character to mm. you know like or whatever and and you don't like that genre and you don't like that type of character and you don't want to write the book then that sucks right like mm. yeah. I you don't want to sap your creative creativity yeah, yeah. if you're would, doing this particularly if it, it hits really hard and you've got to write another five in the um <laughs> In the series you you don't want to be doing it for something that you don't like so yeah okay well, yeah, very exactly. good. Okay. okay well that's awesome. us well, I that's, think that's an awesome episode on how to reverse engineer a bestseller kinda kinda <laughs> having, having said that maybe we can't yeah but um, well, we can but but, yeah. <laughs> there's always a but why is there always a but um so i hope you can all go away and analyze your own books look at your own bestseller but maybe even look at other bestsellers and see if you can pick up why they're doing well um and see how you let go us let us know, know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah let us know in the comments yeah. or, or wherever come see us at the spargillspodcast.com everywhere and yeah. thanks for the patreon people yeah. we're loving you and if you would like to buy us a coffee um once a month come along to patreon.com forward slash spar girls podcast brilliant awesome okay well, thank you all thank for you for your support listening. thanks for listening wow. to another episode of spar girl post podcast oh my god um we'll see you all <laughs> like, next time i know i know mm. see you all bye bye, bye.